Hello my dear friends, I'm so happy you're joining me in this video today and like all my videos I'm trying to address core subjects in our human lives in connection with the spiritual path and to give some clarity about those subjects especially for you spiritual seekers walking on the path of self-realization and spiritual awakening. And today I want to talk about a very central and important subject which is none other than money. And specifically I want to talk about two aspects of money. One is the notion that many people, the moment they kind of embark on the spiritual path and become spiritual seekers, they start to have this feeling that having money or wanting money or wanting to live um, generously, abundantly, is not spiritual. There's a conflict. Money seems to be like a dirty subject. <clears throat> That's one thing I want to talk about. The second thing I want to talk about is the feeling that paying for something spiritual, paying for a spiritual activity, is something that should not happen. I know that not all of you have this um, kind of way of seeing things. I don't have this personally, but I know many people, as I meet many, many people on my path as a teacher, and um, I see this concept strongly um, hindering people in advancing because they will not invest in something that could help them because it's involving money. Okay, so let's talk about the first concept, the, the concept of I'm a spiritual seeker, I'm walking on the spiritual path, and that means I cannot go uh, in the old ways and I cannot have much money. Money, first of all. It's very important that we are clear about what money represents uh, in our mind. Money, on the one hand, on a very practical level, is simply a currency by which we can exchange. Very simple. We agreed as humanity, as a collective, on a certain currency. And it's agreed upon worldwide, globally, and because of this it's easy for us to exchange. That's the simple, practical side of money. Nothing bad, nothing wrong, just like any other form of exchange. However, money has an added element, and this is what I want to address. And this is also what causes the, the, the problem for spiritual seekers. Money has become also a status symbol. In our minds, having money, having a lot of money, making money, means I am more worthy. I have a certain status. The amount of money I have um, represents or shows to the world on what a social level I'm in. Money means I have power also. Prestige, right? So money has become a kind of way of defining who we are. It literally is a kind of uh, self-image reflector. So if I have a lot of money, I'm worth a lot, and I'm someone special, I'm somebody to, to, to um, respect. If I don't have a lot of money, I'm some kind of failure in society. I'm not someone special. So money as a status symbol is where the problem begins. Why? Because as we enter, as you enter the spiritual journey, and you seek after truth, after authenticity and honesty, naturally, you want to kind of eliminate or melt away those layers of your being, of yourself, of your personality that aren't authentic. And so you see that part of you that, um, that is conditioned to see money as a self-defining factor, as a definition of worth, and you want to eliminate that. But in a way, what you're doing without noticing, or what many people are doing without noticing, is throwing the baby with the water, right? So it's like um, they throw the money all together. Instead of just throwing the conceptual framework that is the sabotaging con conceptual framework about money in regards to money, right? Because as we said in the beginning, money is simply a practical exchange tool. That's it. It's a currency. Simple and easy. Say someone in India, okay, uh, living in an ashram or in a temple or in a monastery. Let's say a spiritual teacher. They teach there, but the place is organized in such a way that it gets uh, contributions and donations from the people of the town, maybe um, 
supported by the, the inhabitants, people work in the ashram, they sustain and maintain the ashram, they make sure that activities happen in the ashram. So in a sense, it becomes a self-sustaining organization. However, in the West, if you're a spiritual teacher and you don't have a monastery, you don't have a temple, you don't have an ashram, you're simply teaching from your living room, or maybe you even have to rent a place to teach, then naturally the currency is going to be people paying for that. It's a very, very simple thing. It has nothing to do or to touch, um, nothing to do with the actual spiritual element in it. It doesn't touch the purity or um, it doesn't um, taint the purity of, of, of the happening itself. It's simply that here in the West, we're not organized in such a way that we have self-sustaining organizations such as ashrams. It's not obvious for spiritual student in the West that they should sustain their teacher. And I'm not even think, I don't even think this can work in the West. As a matter of fact, people have tried this in the West to copy paste kind of the Eastern structure into the West. It hasn't worked out. So we need to pay in the, in the, in the West, our currency, our way of sustaining such a sacred happening of spiritual teaching is by paying money exchange, right? So that's kind of clarifying also the, should we pay for spiritual activities? It's simply, it, keep it simple, guys. It's not about, the, the thing is, take away the perception of money as a status symbol. Once you take that away, all your problems are gone. There's no problem. You can earn money, you can enjoy living well, eating well, buying yourself uh, things that you love and need. The, the point is always, and I repeat this in my teachings and sometimes also in my videos, it's about not overindulging. I've talked about this in my video about sex and spirituality, right? So um, don't overindulge. If you start being blinded by money, you're losing yourself into the game that belongs to the matrix of society. Oh, money's going to make me more. Money's going to make me bigger. I'm going to become more of myself. You see, that's the kind of poisoning part that we project onto money. If you simply don't let money move you, but you move masterfully with money and you use it for its practical needs, for its practical usage, there's no problem because you know that money does not define you. Having $10 million in the bank or having $1,500 in the bank won't make you any less or any more because money cannot touch your essence. It is simply a practical tool. It's like saying I have a million books and I have 1,500 books Having a million books makes me more of a person, somebody special. It's absurd, right? It doesn't make any sense. Same goes for money. Having a big amount of money does not make you any more or doesn't make you any less. It's a practical tool. So you don't need to be a poor spiritual seeker. You don't need to, you're not proving yourself to be any more spiritual by uh, depriving yourself of abundance and wealth. However, don't in get into that trip that is rather prevalent in our new age culture now, which is uh, creating abundance all the time. You know, all these techniques for creating abundance and visualizing and writing a check and posting it in front of you a million dollars and rich and manipulating people and posting, you know, all kinds of videos that are not authentic to where you actually are to pretend that you're super rich and successful so that you can kind of, uh, approach the milieu uh, of, of, of rich people so that you get rich clients. You know, that's sometimes, you know, this is where we sometimes lose ourselves because we become inauthentic. We're willing to sacrifice honesty and authenticity in order to have more money because we want the power in it. You understand? That's the inauthenticity. Get rid of the inauthenticity, not of the money. The money is wonderful. Wonderful. Simple tool of exchange. Maybe in the future we'll find a better tool, but right now that's our tool. Let's use it wisely. That's the whole point. And when you look at it this way, you're free of all the, the, um, the mindfuck around it. It's simple. And just to add one thing about using money in spiritual activities, guys, I mean, 
how much money do we all invest in things that simply um, sabotage our health, sabotage our well-being, be it food or entertainment, things that we do not even need. We spend thousands and thousands of dollars or whatever your currency is on these, on these things. Why not spend that money on the thing that is most precious in your life, which is spiritual realization, right? going to true and profound spiritual teachers and seminars and retreats. This is where you actually should invest your money if you're a wise person, right? Talking wise investments. Wise investments is not only just buying some real estate, right? It's what do I want to invest my money in, in connection with my own growth and soul? A question worth asking. So don't feel like when you're investing your money in some spiritual teaching, something is wrong. Not at all. A real spiritual teacher has gone a long way and has transformed themselves so profoundly they really, really acquired a knowledge that not everybody can give you. So just understand that we live in the West. Part of getting that knowledge and supporting that teacher to exist or that organization or that workshop or whatever, that center, is by supporting with money. I hope this video clarifies this subject a bit more and gives you a more easy approach towards money and spirituality. See you in the next videos.